read from Luke 6, 41 and 42. I'll give you a second to perhaps search it in your Bible so you can see with your own eyes what Jesus told us. Why do you look at the speck of the sawdust in your brother A and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to speak about a grievous sickness that may touch the life of all of us. And in fact, it does, time, time to time, more often or less often. It is offense. Not offense that, uh, like criminal offense that somebody does, but offense that you take and keep. Offense that is uh, taking possession uh, and residence in your soul and in your mind. According to dictionary, this offense is annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult or disregard for ourselves. Mind the wording, perceived. So it has happened or it has not happened, but you perceived it happened. Mind, mind, mind word insult. We are not talking about attack or a murder. We are talking about insult. Mind word disregard. Not a murder again, not something seriously harmful, and uh, no, we are not talking about somebody who wanted, uh, wanted to harm your children or your parents. We are talking about disregard. We are talking about small things, and uh, it is, uh, it is um, the cunning and skill of devil that from small things he can make something big. Not something perhaps big that is seen outside, but it is something that may be taking away your happiness, your future. It may be just taking away your destiny, if you let it. Not because it was big at the beginning, not because it was big by nature, not because it was something important, because you let it, because it, you let it work from inside. Of course, uh, in, um, in uh, offense, there is two sides always. There is offender, or somebody we perceive as an offender. And there is the person who is offended, or who perceive themselves as a, as a person offended, as a victim. For a reason that I will explain later, I will concentrate on a side that see themselves as a victim, even though I will still come back to offense being delivered. Uh, some dictionary also use uh, uh, synonym as uh, for offense, the word anger. There is still a difference between anger and offense. Because anger is something that leaves, that is uh, uh, living in the realm of emotions. And so it is, um, it is physical feeling that, uh, that is caused by the spurge of hormones in your veins that makes you to feel physically otherwise. But offense, offense uh, occur in the realm of your mind and in your soul. In fact, very much in the realm of your decision-making center. It's up to your will. You don't feel offense unless you think about it. You don't feel unless you dwell on it, unless you ponder it. And so, in a way, offense is maybe a little bit much more controlled by you than anger. That must be thought of the means. But offense and anger, they go hand by hand. They go hand by hand, fueling each other. Because uh, when you uh, ponder your offense, you will feel your anger rising, and so your mind will affect your body. And also, if you let uh, your anger consume you, you will be so much easier to be offended, and so you will let your body to control your mind. They work hand in hand, and none of them work for us, but they work against us. Uh, when I talk about this okay offense, I'm not talking, it's not like it's me and you and the one uh, loaf of bread. And we are hungry, and so perhaps if we cannot share this bread, we will fight over this bread. I'm talking about the situation that there is me and you, and we are surrounded with a plenty of wonderful bread. We have plenty to eat. 
And then I take um, the roll and I start to bite it away like this, and you feel offended, because in your house they only uh, break the bread and put small bits inside their mouth. This is what you call good manners, and so you feel offended that I don't want to show this manners in your presence, perhaps I disrespect you. And uh, I see you choosing something, and I say, Sure, this is, a, this is a vegan world, and this man is not even a vegan. Why didn't he leave vegan for me? Doesn't he know I'm vegan? Well, I don't know if <laughs> you really know it, but I expect you to know and to think about it. I expect you to guess. I expect that you have so much regard for my needs and my feelings that you remember that I am vegan and so you take every other bread but not vegan one. This was my expectation. And uh, you expect me to remember, to, to be taught in my house that maybe it's just so much different than your house that uh, I should not bite my bread but I should break it. You know where I'm going here? Offense is so subjective. It is so much subjective because I promise you that I could have taken your uh, your um, uh, sorry I should, could have bite the roll without meaning to offend you. Mm. I just did what I do in my house, and uh, I promise you that if I take on your vegan roll, I may have not think that you are vegan actually. It, it didn't enter my mind, and perhaps I'm here to blame here because I should be thinking about you. But reality is that I think more about myself. And uh, I don't think anybody can throw a stone on me here. This is such true. People think about you less than you think. They mostly think about themselves. It's good we are Christians, because all of us, we are working on it to think more about uh, uh, other people. We work on it. We are not there yet. And my not, I may not remember you are vegan. Or you that I am vegan, sorry. <laughs> I'm not vegan, by the way. It was an uh, example. So, uh, when you are offended, it may have been that somebody wanted to offend you. It may have been that they didn't want to offend you and they didn't care whatsoever. They didn't care, they, they offended you. And it may be that uh, they actually meant well. They perhaps uh, wanted interaction with you for good and yet you got offended against their goodwill. So, you see where I'm going here. Notwithstanding, their standing, notwithstanding what they meant and will, you may be just offended and this happened. And sometimes offense is, is so, uh, is just so, uh, so petty and small and unbelievably funny. I uh, find out when I was working on this message that I'll be telling you stories, in which stories I'm a fool. But this is what happened, and perhaps I've learned some lessons from the sto stories when I was not prudent but fool. I'm, uh, I'm relying now to this Bible verse from, <coughs> proverb, uh, from Proverbs 12:16. Uh, Fools show their annoyance immediately, but prudent overlook insult. I've seen this very funny cartoon story long, long ago. It was a uh, upset looking wife standing there and caring husband who said, darling, you look somehow off. Are you not okay? And wife says, I'm fine. And he says, is there, is there something I did? And she says, no. <coughs> is there something I didn't do? No. Is this something I said? No. Is there something I didn't say? No. He's thinking and thinking, and he says, is there something I said in casual reference to something I did when the thing I did should not have been done at all or perhaps done otherwise with more um, regards to your feelings? Maybe. I knew it. I've laughed and laughed and laughed when I <laughs> see this story, but later, uh, some years has went, and again, I saw this story after a year, after I guess when I was already married, married and had uh, my own family, and I said, gosh, they, they looked for inspiration in my house. This is like a, how I get offended. <laughs> this is how I get offended. And uh, this is how I expect somebody to just look for the cause of my offense, right? <laughs> so if, if, they, uh, if they didn't know uh, since the beginning, let them search, let them search, <laughs> search for reasons. Uh, in your 
your head, offense is the same. It takes your time and energy. Offense uh, exists much more in your mind than it is independent. But it causes you to do the actions, say words, and behave in the way that affects reality. I would like you to understand it. Offense has happened or it has not happened. But here you are, the God resemblance with the strong will and all the possibilities with your hands and with your words and with your prayers and the, 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 the perfect creation of great power. And there is offense in your head. There is offense. And if you let it walk in you, then this offense go outside. I don't know if it happened there or not, but it find a place in you and now this offense has a power to affect the world because you speak, because you pray or you cease from praying, because you act or cease from acting, because you have a great impact on reality and if there is offense in your mind, then this impact you have on reality is so much polluted and limited in a meaning that we are supposed to have this positive power, we are supposed to express the will of God influence reality in a very, very good way. So let it not be polluted by offense we keep. So offense being uh, in nature a uh, very subjective ent entity is very objective to the outside world when you start to act on it. It's very obvious working power. And the power it gets, it gets from you. Offense this offense gets power from you. It cannot get power from any other source. But it happened that even if we know that we get offended easily, or we get offended unnecessarily, uh, we still have this, uh, this uh, tendency to blame a person who offended us. That makes it harmful. That makes it har harmful for you, also for relation with somebody. And just for, uh, for uh, reality around you, it makes it harmful. I, um, most, first of all, of course, you hurt yourself. It's another story where I play the role of, of, of the fool and I just hope that I have grown out from the shoes I wore then. I was in my university. And uh, it was a uh, first year and first time we were supposed to do something um, a little bit independent. It was like we had to go to some places and do the paintings of these places. It was kind of artistic because so and uh, five was expected from us and three I prepared. It was difficult for me. I was always bad with paintings. And uh, when I brought it and uh, my professor said, how can you be so slothful not to prepare even minimum five? People brought 10, people brought 12. You couldn't even do five? And this word slothful has hurt me so much. And I cried in the toilet like uh, one is known to do in school when <laughs> something will happen. So I cried in the toilet a little and later on I took offense. I stopping, I've stopped uh, greeting my professor. I've stopped greeting my professor. My professor. I. When I met him in my university, I turned my face away like that. My professor, and it's not like you know, he was wrong and I was right, right? Minimum was five, people prepared ten or twelve, and I brought three. So, it's not like I said, but my reasoning, my reasoning was quite funny then. It was like, this is my education. If I choose not to take this education seriously, isn't it my right? It is my right. And he's professional here. He should treat me with respect. He can just fail, let me fail the year in, in his power, but insult me with his words. For months or years, really, I managed to maintain this thinking. I don't know how I managed to maintain this thinking, but you see that it is possible to maintain very, very funny thinking if you will put your mind to it. I pray to God that we won't be putting our mind to maintain absurd thinking that, <laughs> that will allow us to keep our offenses. This professor was actually a very good professor. He was committed. 
why he got emotional about my uh, slothfulness. Because he was committed, because he cared. But I, uh, I took it, I blamed him for it. He was organizing many events for us students. And, uh, um, and so there was like going out, painting. I could have improved so much. I could have gone to this auntie. Actually, because I was so bad, he was very ready to give me extra time and extra uh, attention for me to get better. But I was avoiding him. I was even avoiding the lecturers he kept, let alone a special outing he's been preparing for us students. So, you, you see, uh, because I decided to get, take offense, and you can say that it was quite silly of me to take this offense. I mean, I was wrong at that, at that place, and he was perhaps wrong. But then again, he may have been right. Perhaps somebody else under emotional strain would take it better and improve. I chosen not to improve, I've chosen to take offense, and I've lost many options to improve in my painting area and to just go with my education further and further because of offense. And uh, in this case, it has actually affected my reality, perhaps my work later and everything, quite strong. In some other cases, like it was my professor, I don't know how important this relationship was personally. But of course it affected uh, our relation. There was no relation. I was turning my face when I saw the man, professor. And uh, how long can one be and the belief is right? And uh, in some other cases, like, like, and I refused to go to some places when I knew I may meet this professor. And so offense can stop you from going where you really want to be, and where you really should be, and want to go. And now I have a special present for you. I'm asking my, our drama group to present a little, a little still for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am offense. conflict even arising. You may be, even have this, uh, this kind of reason. What if, what if you got wounded again? What if you have, can get hurt again? 
But another thing about offense is it's. Oh, sorry, I'm coming back. You have to let go. To move forward, you have to let go. Offense will not allow you. Offense is just like a lead that keeps you. And to move forward, you let go of your offense. But uh, there is another thing about offense. It's very often uh, orchestrated by principally disempowers. Why not? This efficient tool that will keep a, a Christian, a child of God, from moving forward, that will keep them in one place when they can go and change the world? Of course, of course, why not principalities and powers pay, pay their attention, special attention to create this wonderful thing from their perspective, wonderful thing that keeps Christians from moving forward, that keeps them forward, drag them forward, stop them from loving each other, stop them from interacting interacting, from sharing, from getting together, from helping each other. Yes, offense can make you to refuse kindness when it is due, to refuse charity when it is due, to refuse even just exchanging of information that when it is due. And God does not play dice. He didn't make anything in accident, by accident. If there is somebody around you, there is, uh, this, this person has something for you, and you have something in, for, for this person. So, why should principalities and powers allow you people to interact freely? Better make you be offended, best if they are, you are offended both sides. Or at least one of you. Better make you people to avoid each other. Or refuse to take anything from each other. Isn't it better from their point of view than let you go forward and change the world according to God's will as it was supposed to be? Uh, you think it's hard. It's not hard, because it's about how we take offense. When we are in a good mood, healthy, and slept very well, and we just ate our light food, it's hard to offend us. They will say, you are silly, and I say, <laughs> sometimes I am. They will say, oh, uh, uh, th that was stupid of you, and you say, perhaps. They will say that uh, uh, you did something wrong and you say, ah, I'll think maybe next time I'll do something else. But when you're exhausted, hungry, or sick, or just something happened in your life that makes you so sad, or perhaps something has angered you, so the anger is waiting in you, inside you, just ready to find a reason to go on, this is the moment when principalities and powers will bring you somebody who may not mean to offend you, but will be reckless. They will bring somebody whose concentration is just somewhere else, not on you. It may be your friend, it may be your family, or somebody who barely knows you. But the thing is that it will be somebody whose attention is not focused on you at that moment. And offense has happened. It was so easy to orchestrate, but it takes our insight and God's grace that we can escape this trap. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, from human perspective, from human perspective, offense is just harmful. It's a total nothing that grows into something to eat our energy, our future, our time, to eat away from our life. But what does Bible says about offense? Let us go to um, Proverbs. Um, to Proverbs uh, um, Matthew Proverbs twelve sixteen again. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. A fool's uh, why am I, do I have this, uh, uh, this version? The prud I wanted the version, uh, uh, I think from James, or, uh, that, that was written, but the fool overlook insult. Overlook. Yes, it is possible for you to take offense and process it and be able to forgive or to assume that there's nothing to forgive and go free from it. You took offense and then you let it go like our brother in the drama. But it's much better, it's much better to overlook it. It's much better just to assume, if they say it, they say it by accident. If they hit me, they did it by accident. They didn't mean it. More often than not, it is true. I'm sorry to say, they don't think about you that much, they think about themselves. 
They, they, maybe they think about their children or their spouses. About you, they think but a little. And thank for them, thank for this little attention and affection we have from each other. I'm grateful.